Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting ring to episode 6 and 7 of Yes, Pretty Cure 5. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 6 and 3, 2, 1, go. So is this episode just going to be like Cotton just being very like moody until she finally says, you know what? I'm going to be a pretty cure. <laughs> but honestly, I think she needs this because last week was really sad for her. Oh my god, baby! Look out! Bum bum bum. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, she's always been alone. She's very similar to, um, mm. poor baby. Yeah, she's very similar to, um, Adesu Tachibana, like, in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, like, Adesu Tachibana is so fucking precious! Ah! Mm. And even now, she's still like that. And she just waits. Because you're afraid. One thing I actually forgot to say, you know, when we were talking about the saviors of the show, one of the five girls, don't really remember her name, is actually in my favorite series of all time that I've loved ever since I reacted to the show and met so many good people because of that series. Bandari, aka Bang Dream Girls Band Party, one of them actually voices Not Really My Best Girl. She voices, um, I think it's Sugu? Sugumi? Sugumi from Afterglow. Literally, that whole freaking band is a goat cast. I mean, seriously. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was thinking about it one day, and I was like, oh, my God. Because it's the only ones that I really know of their voice is the is Ron, Tomoe, and Sugumi. That's it. Momo, I don't know Momo's thank you. And then same thing with Himari. So it's like three out of five. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, even though you're not my favorite band, because you know I like Rosalia, but like, oh, that's so cute. I was like, you went from Pretty Cure to a band, and you play a precious baby girl. When they did the Persona collab, I wanted your card in the event, but I didn't work for it, because I was like, Oh, it'll just come back, and it's never come back, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm stupid, but, you know, I, I think I have, like, a four-star card of hers. I might have to check. I don't know. I still can't even believe he got the fucking pinky. I know. We'll get it back. Yeah, because you know, that's nosing me. It's just like, yes, Cotton, you're coming no matter what. Like, oomph, let's go. Well, that's because she's into her head too much. But I think, you know... She's positive when we all know it's going to happen. Hmm. 
Hmm? Oh! Poor baby. You can just tell it's all on her mind. <laughs> oh my god and she looked so happy too But she still felt lonely. Oh my god. Ah! Yep, this is like, in a nutshell, this is Arisu Tachibana from Idol Master Cinderella Girls. And then when she performs her song, she's performing to her parents. Like, When I upload this, I'm gonna, in the comment section, I will literally post the video of her singing that song so you all can feel what I'm feeling. Uh. I'm about to cry, oh my god. <laughs> You can cut him. You just have to believe in yourself. Girl, we all saw it. We all saw it, but you still have potential. You just have to find it in yourself. But you still weren't true to yourself, though. And of course, you know, knows me Boruto. I'm not taking no for an answer. <laughs> like knows me. Just like read the room. Read the room. <laughs> Just because you had fun with her doesn't mean that, you know, she's up to it. We all know she's going to be a pretty here in the end. But at the same time, if she's not feeling it, you have to let her go.
the fact I can't. Like we can't have a moment just to like laugh and do girl shit, but like now the fucker has a gun. <laughs> You seriously brought the pinky with you at this time? I thought you would have left it at headquarters. It's gonna... Um, um, oh, that's so gross. See, now this makes me wonder, in like, freaking, <laughs> tropical version, if some ish like this happens in the show, oh my god, that'll be really interesting, but technically they kinda did that with Healing Good, but except, psh, not in the way that I thought they would, but like, oh, uh, kinda? That and freaking, um, Kira Kira. Yeah, you can't attack it! That's the pinky! You gotta love the love between these two. I mean, not not only because it's, you know, Naruto and Baruto, but, you know, mm. They do so cute together. Like, oh my god. It's just because Rin loves Nozomin so much and it doesn't, even though it doesn't seem like a romantic thing, but you can see the connection that they have. And it's like, oh, like, you guys are so fucking cute. But then me, because of the fact is, you know, who their seiyus are and the big important things that they're currently in as of right now of their lives and their career. It's like, oh yeah, that's a father and his son just being so fucking cute together and always arguing. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, but can you destroy the pinky? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because something's so cute, yeah, you can't hit it and destroy it, right? I don't know why, but I thought the pinky was about to hit him. <laughs> oh. It's just like, like, go back and like the way he pulled his arm back, I was like, oh, okay, he's about to get yoked. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. Our cheerleaders are down, and I don't like this. We didn't even get in the transformation. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> Honestly, like, you know what? And I've never said this in all my freaking years of watching Pretty Care. The way she has her hair up like that, she literally looks like Care White. I mean, like, oh, uh, if that is a reference to Fatariwa, I mean, you know, I love it because it's nice. It's good when, you know, other different genres are pretty here make reference. You gotta also miss what I like about like kind of really more the older series rather than the newer series. And I think somebody said this like between Kira Kira all the way up to maybe kind of Star Twinkle where you know how like way before they got their wines we would always see them like fight. And Kira Kira kind of did a little bit of that but then once they got their wines it was all about wines. And such. I I still, because like, if you look at freaking, I'm about to say Star Twinkle, Chocolate Rouge. (laughs) Chocolate Rouge does a little bit of both, but they only use the wands as the final blow. You see them like really kick butt more in the episode. So I'm like, thank you for going back to like Roots because it is good. Some people don't really like using a wand. Because sometimes it's a little... uh... But yeah, I mean, it still works. I mean, there's going to be a point where they're probably going to have, like, a wand from what I kind of remember. Hmm. You did good, Coco. 
My trunks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your girl might be rewatching some Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> There you go. Oh, just miss you. See, there we go. Oh, oh. That's like me with my dad and be like, "Hey, I miss you. Can you come see me?" I mean, yeah, because she can't give you favoritism because honestly, if Cotton did that, she would have to do that for everybody. And so, no, she has to treat those of me just like everybody else. <laughs> but yay, like all five girls are together. Yay! Woo! Oh, my dog! Yay! I'm so stupid. But, like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy. Like, I always love when the whole entire group until the final cure, the final, final cure, a.k.a. Milky Rose when coming until Go-Go, um, initially, like, comes together. It, it just, oh, God, it works. Because, like, let, let's talk about healing good real quick. When it was just our three, and before, you know, my queen came in and, you know, with the dog and transform him with the dog because you know that's the best part of the series. That and having Aoi Yuki in it because I mean you know the year of Aoi Yuki as we've talked about before. Um, having those three together and seeing you know Hinata, Chiyu, and Nadoka together and doing their you know like funny moments together and having just any cute adorable moment which is sweet. And the relationship and the friendship that they have because of being pretty curious, it just makes it a lot more better. Then sometimes it's a little hard when the newer girl comes in because like, <laughs> Sir, oh, wait. before you know you're like yeah we're gonna be nuts and then, ah. <laughs> okay so typically you know sometimes with some of the pretty here series like we there, there's two that immediately kind of come to mind where um the new cure comes in and the group is more <sighs> like they feel some type of way about the about the new chick and stuff that was a little bit of go princess pretty cure and kitty kitty pretty girl mode especially with Toa and CL, but a lot more, in my opinion, towards, like, Toa than CL. I mean, yes, both characters of Toa and CL, um, especially more of Toa, because Toa is, yes, a princess. Um, Toa was very, like, when she finally became, you know, just a normal girl, she's very a little stuck up and such, and so having those three... <laughs> Um, necessarily, like, come in and say, okay, yes, you're a princess and stuff, but you still have to care for people and everything. Honestly, like, I, because I'll never forget, like, the first time when I watched that show and I was like, oh. honestly, I really should have started a reaction series when Go Princess was airing because, like, Go Princess and how it was just, like, 
as much as like I, I love Kitty Kitty Pretty Carol mode and how that will always be important to me because the fact is that was one of the other first shows that I was like, oh, I'm gonna go, to, I'm gonna go ahead and react to this because I watched all the other series like by myself. I was like, you know what? Let me do something different for a change. And then now look. <laughs> Um, but going back to Toa, like, there were points where even when I was watching it every Saturday, Sunday, whenever, you know, the fan dubs came out and everything, um, where I necessarily didn't like her at first because I was like, yeah, you just stuck up. You are a princess. You are a little bit more privileged than, you know, our first three. And it's going to take a while for you to necessarily really care about people. But from the help of Hinata... Oh my god. What was the other? Hinata Kirarin. Cure Mermaid. There we go. And, um, oh my god. What was her name? What was the girl's name with the braids in her hair and the glasses? Because I, I loved her so much. She was so adorable. Whatever her name was. Um, because I know a lot of us really wanted her specifically to be one because she just oozed that pretty cure energy. And then they were just like, no. She's a side character. But once Toa learned from those four um, how to be compassionate to people and caring and sweet. Because as a princess, you're supposed to be not only sweet towards like family members and people who you're, you're about to meet, but also, you know, the people who live in your kingdom and such. And, and then also your other brother, her older brother, because her older brother was fine as F. I mean, you know... <laughs> We just got to talk about that. But, I mean, like, it, then comparing her to uh, CL, like, CL was very stuck up at first, especially with, like, the cooking thing and how CL lived in France for a year and such and learned from, you know, um, the the chef that she idolized for such a long time and how she learned to make this, this, that, and third. And then when Ichika, you know, Ichika, our resident, you know, pink protagonist, has, like, the burst of energy and you know no matter what it's always going to ooze towards everyone else and such um and especially when they did that competition of them making something CL was always questioning herself and it's like how does she have all this like kira kira and then me I don't have that I don't understand like the kira kira do and then when she finally you know understood it and what she had to do in the plus her secret of finding out, like, oh, hey, she's a fairy and everything. I mean, of course, because <laughs> this is best girl Chino from freaking Is the Yellow Rabbit we're talking about, damn it. Um, and, and such. And so that's what I love about this series. It, it shows, like, yes, there are, you know, some characters who are a little more higher up than everyone else, but even if they are, and when they come into the group, yeah, it's more like, mm, like, we don't know how we're going to feel with this new girl, but. It takes time, especially, you know, you have a group of girlfriends or a group of guy friends and you're all hanging out and how, because there's always one, one of you decides to bring in a new person in the group. And sometimes when you do that, um, certain people always don't mesh together. And that's why we have like certain, even in your friend group, no matter how many friends that you have, you will still have clicks in your friend group the ones that you will always hang out with the one that you'll hang out on like special occasions the one like this is that and the third and you know you try to see if you can have everyone almost like coexist within each other and ish sometimes it works out and then sometimes it doesn't but that does not mean you don't stop being friends with that other person you still just you know, kind of put them towards the side and it's like that. I've also had friends like that as well. Hell, I still even do. And so sometimes it's really hard. Okay, that was a car. Um, it is hard to have like most or if all your girlfriends, guy friends, whoever to hang out with each other because if one person doesn't like another person, then the whole like group is out of whack and then you're like, okay, what the heck do we do now? But yeah, I'm just glad it works. They, cause honestly, like, mm, just the friendship of every friend group of Pretty Cure. Because <laughs> it gives me feels to my fave <laughs> HBO show, Big Little Lies. But, you know, I don't think some of y'all can watch that. Because, I mean, Big Little Lies is like... TV... I think you could. Because it's like TV PG, a little bit TV MA. But um, it, it just talks about certain themes that, you know, like a lot of people are currently talking about today. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a really good episode. I loved it. But yeah, go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you guys in one second. <laughs>
episode seven. <laughs> okay, episode seven in three, two, one, go. It is time. It is time to see my baby Sora. Like, oh. knows me to sleep. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> he wasn't gone. <laughs> There was a boy in your room. <sighs> no! Yeah, you probably dreaming about some good looking men, you know, just like the rest of us. <laughs> but yes, finally, my baby voice is coming back into my life. I'm so happy because, you know, after Kingdom Hearts 3, and if you played, you know, the, the, the Remind situation and what the heck happened in Remind, and then, you know, playing. Because, like, your girl has not played, um... Melody of Memories yet, but I, I've watched someone play it, and so I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm like, make you, make you save me, please, like, oh my god, I'm just, <sighs> Nomura, like, I, I need you to hurry up and finish Final Fantasy 3, <laughs> Final Fantasy 3, <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 Part 2 Remake, so that we can go on to Kingdom Hearts 4 or whatever the hell you're planning because I need to see my son back with his best friend and his boyfriend, damn it. Like, that's all I need. I need my trio back together so that I can cry over them again because having Sora be gone, like, it hurts. And the pleasure girl just wants to hear Mamoru as Riku again and just, like, talk very seductively in my ear because... <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, your girl likes anime boys and men, like, too much. Yeah, you might have to do it on your own. Hmm. Why don't you just lock the door? Guys, I am so excited for this. Like, oh my god. Ah! 
he's so fucking cute. Like, ah! <laughs> Come on, speak. Speak. Oh, shit. Now I just want to hear him in human form because <laughs> he's just so cute. You're like, ah. Looks like someone's getting demoted. The pink one knows I mean. Yeah, honestly knows I mean. It just should be you. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, in a way, you're the one who founded it, so... Should be you. <laughs> yeah, he gonna be a little ish. And I love it so much. Like, oh, he has such attitude. Like, mm. that's not Sora. That's Venus. Ah. <laughs> well, we should put him back in there, shouldn't we, huh? Just a little prick, that's all. Give him time, he'll warm up to you guys. No, oh my god. No, it's okay, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's complicated. Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm crying again. Oh my god. <laughs> This show, oh my god, Pretty Cure, always makes me cry. <laughs> yeah. You guys basically need like a hideout. Yeah, Secret Base too. Hold on. This is already giving me feels towards freaking Tropical Rouge because, and I think somebody actually referenced it when that episode of Tropical Rouge came, when they were looking for like their secret base and such. Yeah, mm hmm. I, I mean, honestly, yeah. Can we see the storage room? Mm-hmm. No, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. The three kids and mom and dad. Not stop being a little prick. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, because you don't really want to. Yeah. Well, shouldn't everybody also do this as well? Can I also say something real quick? I can't even believe I'm about to say this. Why do the freaking hot Seiyus? I mean, his voice. Don't know who this Seiyu is, but oh my god. <laughs> Why did they get the most attractive Seiyus to voice like the egg gang <laughs> I can't.
I mean, cause, but it's true. It, it's so true. I mean, I can't. Mm, yeah, because there's no there, there's no voice in the villains of the week for s- tropical ruse, my bad. That I'm like, oh dang, like you have a really nice voice. I just I want to hear that more. Please talk to me, yes. But we haven't got there yet. We probably will, but. <laughs> I swear to God, y'all better get my Sora back, damn it. This would be a needle in a haystack. <clears throat> oh, we're just gonna straight up use all the teddy bears. Like, oh. Mm. Oh, poor baby. But you can't blame yourself. You didn't know. Oh my God, he's so funny. <laughs> oh my God, I got him. Yeah, but you know, bad guys, they like to walk over people's kindness and such. Mm hmm. Well, that was easy.
I can't. I'm sorry. And then, oh my god, like, <laughs> I can't. You know, all right, let's go ahead and say it. Let's go ahead. And we welcome that to Coco to the heart of oh my god. We did it, guys. I'm a mess. <laughs> but oh my god, it's so weird to hear him because like when I hear him speak as like a regular old like boy guy, like I'm expecting to hear it like I still <laughs> I, I just I straight up hear more Benitas than Sora because I mean yes, Sora is our, you know, precious cinnamon roll boy that we love so much and you just wanna cuddle and be like Oh my god, it's okay. Like, yes, you're the one who has the Keyblade at all, and we love you so much, and you're gonna see your boyfriend again, but, like, him's Vanitas, like, oh. Huh. Your girl had. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I can't. Well, it makes sense that, you know, honestly, yes, as I said in this episode, you know, well, just in general, let's go back to the previous episode, how sometimes friends can't mix with other friends. There's your thing right there. They, Of course, they're going to have moments where they argue, and they're going to probably argue a lot. I mean, th think about freaking Sailor Moon in a nutshell, and how many moments or arguments that we saw with Usagi and Rei. Because Usagi and Rei argued, like, all the time. And this is why a lot of people will still say that they liked her, uh, Rei's counterpart in the, um, in the anime rather than in the manga. Because you, you get everybody in that series. Because no matter what, like, I haven't seen the new Sailor Moon Crystal movie yet. But as someone who has religiously read the manga over and over and over and over and over again and who has seen because I ha your girl has not seen stars yet and I really want to buy it but I still need to buy the rest of the damn series of Sailor Moon all over again so I can rewatch that and stuff um I, I before I read the manga I was always in love with the fact of seeing Usagi and Rei fight because like they they argue like brother um, almost like a brother sister sister type and such but that's only because they love each other so much it's very similar to like Ash and Misty when Pokemon was on the rise and stuff and seeing how much they argued and was like oh hey you look like a damn couple like Jesus Christ but then when you look at like Sailor Moon Crystal and where in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinion when the Mongo came out and when Sailor Moon Crystal officially came out for the anniversary for Sailor Moon, a lot of people don't like the Scouts in the Crystal series because it feels like they have no personality and such. Because, okay, for an example, my number one fave Sailor Scout is Sailor Venus, Minako Aino. I mean, because the, the girl is an October baby, so of course I'm gonna love her no matter what. But, like, I was always, like, she was always my best girl. Um... 
in season one and season two of Crystal, I feel like my love for her kind of died. And I was just like, oh my god, it's so weird to like see her in this because yes she has the personality of a leader and I do love that because in the original anime it was like that a lot anytime when like Sailor Moon was eh, it, you know she had to step up but in Crystal and in the manga she really essentially steps up because she is the leader of the scouts when you are not looking at Sailor Moon and such because when Sailor Moon was Princess Serenity best girl had to come in and be like okay no I'm the leader but it just feels like especially when you look at them and Crystal it's like damn like none of y'all have personalities so and it was a lot of things that you know at the time when that show aired um people on Twitter including myself at like I think it was like six seven in the morning my time when I was watching the show would always comment every other week or every two weeks when the show came out that these girls are an empty shell of what you know most of us have grown up on watching Sailor Moon because getting you know to see personalities and seeing them shine what's their hopes what their dreams outside of being guardians in you know protecting Sailor Moon they had their own dreams um Amy or Ami she wanted to be a doctor um Makoto wanted to be a bride essentially that was her biggest dream and, and still she's still like she's like my third favorite character Ray wanted to be she still wanted to be like the the oh my god um. <laughs> she wanted to still continue with her temple work right I think from what I remember and then best girl Minako I know she wanted to be an idol and stuff she wanted to be famous just like me and <laughs> in a way I am kind of famous because you know YouTube but not in the way that I think I should be or want to be and such but those four girls had hopes and dreams I, I can't really say the same for like the outer guardians because I mean you know <laughs> Haruka and Michi they just wanted to be together <laughs> No matter what, like seriously, um, Pluto was just there. Like Pluto was just like her. Mm, that's a good question. Pl yeah, Pluto. Pluto. No, because really, Pluto and, and my other best girl, Saturn, Hotaru, they were really just there because of their love for Chibiusa and that the fact is that they cared about her so much and everything. But it still had. They still had like development, even with the fact is yes, these are the two people that we really have to take care of because there are princesses. And such but still like seeing them outside of their lives and guardians and everything is always the best thing about that show because looking at season one and season two and maybe kind of a little bit of season three of crystal um it's weird that's all and as someone who has not rewatched crystal and like a couple of years but i i think i watched like an episode and I think it was just episode one just to like compare to because a friend and I we were having our conversation about it and she had never even seen Crystal before um we had a conversation saying like okay like which one do you like better and I said okay um for me now I would still say OG because OG was just oomph. but if we're talking about like animation I will say new series even though like Okay, total animation. I love you. We we gonna have a conversation real quick about this. So, but it, here's my thing, and they thank God they haven't done with done this to Pretty Cure because I feel like every season of Pretty Cure, the the budget and the quality and everything gets better and better. I'm sitting here wondering how in the world did they go from original Sailor Moon to what the heck season one and season two Crystal was because. We can all agree that that was the worst, like, animation quality, like, everyone's seen. Even though, I mean, like, I understand at the time, um, they probably didn't have enough. Or maybe they weren't even ready, because a lot of people did say that as well. That they were a little bit rushed into things. And yes, there have been some other things in the case where, like, okay, in my opinion, for, like, when I talked to a couple of my friends about Kingdom Hearts 3, a lot of people will say that, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 have been in development for like 12 something years. And no, that's a lie. It was, it had been in development ever since I think 2012 and such. And that was when Nomura was like, let me go ahead and show it out to people. But technically that was Square Enix and Nomura was over here like, no, we shouldn't have did this. Like, mm, we wasn't ready. But yes, when you look at that end product, like, yes, it is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Like, oh my God, I can't. Like, <laughs> and stuff. But when you, when you look at something like 
Pretty Cure in general and the animation quality of Pretty Cure and then you compare it to Sailor Moon and we're not I'm not comparing it as to like oh a magical girl series can't be like this and da 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 because I don't really like when people do that you all magical girls shows no matter what can all coexist and there's not there's not going to be one that bl is better than the other no matter what everything is all still good you're still going to love it no matter what but I hate or really dislike so freaking much is when people will who are fans of Pretty Hero or people who are fans of Sailor Moon don't like the opposite show and really will downgrade the crap out of the show and I'm like oh my god like it, it's the same thing it's in the same genre like oh my god why do you talk so much smack about hating this show when it's just as good as the other show like it's just that there are some people who just don't want to spend the time to sit and watch it and I get it I understand. See, the moon has like I think two hundred episodes. So you telling me you're okay with watching a two hundred episode series, but you're not okay with watching a fifty? That's not cool. I mean, you can spend time and watch it, and then you're like, "Come on, damn it!" Like seriously. But I mean, uh, really, yeah. Like going back to the animation quality, like you can tell the difference. And like I said, every year in Pretty Cure, the quality gets better and better and better. Um, up until you know, say the moon crystal coverage. <laughs> I mean, when the Blu-rays have come out, yes, they've they've gotten better. But I think at the time when Say the Moon Crystal came out, like if there was, oh god, god, when did that come out? Like 2016, 20, 2015, 2016. That had to be the worst animation quality I had ever seen for that year. I've seen worse as an anime reactor from like CGI to even two D. And such. I mean, we can Okay, if there is one, and we, who I can't, I cannot believe I'm about to bring this ish up. If there is one Pretty Cure series that, in the beginning, with the animation quality, was awesome, but by the time we finished the dang show, it was like, eh. And then, like that situation of the story and the end game was, eh. It is Star Twinkle Pretty Cure, and as much as I like it. It ain't one of my favorites, but as much as I liked it, I still have a lot of issues with that series, especially with the fact is towards the quality. Once we got to the point where you had the 12 Princess of the Zodiacs, and maybe they got big, big seiyus. I don't know who the heck was cast for the seiyus, and I would love to go back and check and look. But if they were big names you got to kind of sit here and have to think, how much money are the seiyus getting for this? And, and this ain't just for a Star Twinkle Pretty Cure. We're talking about the whole freaking thing of Pretty Cure in general. Think about any of the movies where we've had a Pretty Cure All-Star series of a movie and every single Pretty Cure. Not talking about what they're doing currently now, but what, what they're currently doing now is still, in my opinion, one of the dumbest things to do. But I understand why they had to do it. But at the time, like, let's, I think the last time they had everybody together was, like, Go Princess? No. No, Maho Girls. Maho Girls was the last time everybody was all together. So, when Kid and a Pretty Carl and Moe's movie came out, their all-star movie came out, and they were like, oh, we're just going to take these. <laughs> um, the quality was still good, but it was like, damn, like, the best thing about this series was always seeing past with the newer generation and such, going all the way back to Fatadiwa, all the way to the current new one series. And so the last time when we got to really see that was the anniversary and everything but when you look at a movie budget for like anything especially like for toy animation especially when you're doing like pretty cool all-star movies um it's grand it's big toy animation is going to give them a lot of money but they're not going to give them as much but going back into like the the star twinkle thing so like i said let's say you give like big you got big big seiyus in this cast okay and you're going to give them a lot of money right and let's say from your budget you don't have as much money as you started out in the beginning and you're watching the episode and you can tell from like maybe the last 10 episodes so that would be episode 49 no episode 40 no episode 30 something to probably the final episode that the quality and the final battle quality is not the best because I think we can all kind of say that it, that it wasn't the best 
Um, and it just felt weird. And I was like, even though I liked it, I was like, okay, hold on. But let's really think about this. Because that was one of my little, like, problems I had with it. I was like, how can you get these big, big stars and coming in just to say something? So, because it makes you wonder, like, even if in the episodes that they weren't necessarily present in, like, present in, blah, blah. Like, for an example, okay. The seiyu of Miko Yo Yozawa from Love Live. She's in Star Twinkle Pretty Cure. Last week's episode, she made an appearance. Uh, okay, but by the time y'all ain't gonna see this, we gonna be past that episode. So the episode where the girls were making the Kurarun in Bento. Um, when their teacher came in and said, she said something and then, you know, she was off on her way. Imagine how much money she got paid for that. Just to come in and say a little teeny tiny line and then be on her married way. That's kind of the same thing that it's kind of comparing to with the 12 princess of the Zodiac for Star Trek Pretty Care. They had to kind of get them big, big sayus. And so if they're running out of money, but they're kind of getting as much money, but maybe little to none, then you can tell by the last few episodes of Star Twinkle, the quality wasn't like the best. And then plus the fact is like, we, we can all agree that the situation about Fua, as much as I love her so much, was not the best thing that they did for the show. And I'm not saying it like, to be mean, I'm saying it more as a person who is a critiquer and such. And I was like, okay. Because, like, okay. My best girl. Oh. Oh. My best girl. <sighs> Cosmo. Like, to, to number one, to get the freaking say you of Anastasia from I Don't Magic Turn All the Girls. Like, big bless. But for her to be like. I love my planet Rainbow, but, you know, like, saving Fua. That, like, hit her. That was a red flag for me. <laughs> it's 2021, and I'm still upset about that. I was like, hold up, boo-boo. You serious? Like, mm-mm. <laughs> I can have a conversation about that, but I will literally say, like, yeah, if you haven't seen that final reaction and my final thoughts on that show, go watch that video, because, like, I... I go in, but not as much as in that I'm going in now. Because it's just, like, I think it's a lot of, like, fuel and energy that I've had for the last few years. And I'm, like, still thinking about it and such. And so I I'm always a little hesitant. <laughs> but as much as I love this show so much, near and dear to my heart, I'm like, yeah, there's a little bit of nitpicking in this show, that I in this series, that I would love to talk about. I mean, you know, maybe one day where I could say, like, <laughs> all the things that, like, mm, kind of made me upset about Pretty Cure, but, like, secretly I still love, but I'm like, uh, who knows, really? But other than that, because I am sorry for making this reaction a little bit longer than the other one, but... <laughs> Other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode 6 and 7 of Yes, Pretty Year 5. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Monday for everybody else and next Friday for Patreons for episodes 8 and 9. Bye, guys.